Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Today I'm doing part one of the 10 cards one kit using the My Monthly Hero April 2018 card kit. We're going to do the first five today, so we're just going to go ahead and jump in with card number one. Card number one is going to be a very simple and clean card, and I love the way this turned out. Um, so we're going to start off by doing some stamping. Now, um, I decided to grab some watercolor cardstock. I actually like two different kinds of watercolor cardstock. One is from uh, Ranger, and then the other one I use is Canson XL. This one here is from Ranger, and the difference is the color, basically. They're about the same texture and thickness, but um, this one is just a little bit more whiter, and my background's gonna be white, so I chose this cardstock. Now, I am going to stamp three of the cactus and three of the flower pots that came in the stamp set and I just use VersaFine ink. Next I'm going to go in with my clear embossing powder from Nouveau. This is a crystal clear embossing powder and I'm going to go ahead and melt that. Um, we're going to do a little bit of water coloring with the inks that came in the kit and so um, I like to emboss my water or watercolor paper just because it um, it will help contain the ink. Now I dabbed all three of the ink colors, the Fiesta Teal, the Fiesta Red, and the Fiesta Yellow on my glass mat here. And these are really bright and vivid colors. And if you were just to add the, the teal to the yellow, it would create a real bright green. But I wanted to create um, some duller, duller color cactuses. So to create a duller color, that's where I'm going to add a little bit of the red. And then this is going to really tone down my green. And I'm going to do that um, just for my cactuses. And then I'm also going to do a few duller colors with um, the flower pots. I didn't want this um, card to be very bright and vivid. I wanted to, I wanted to kind of keep it masculine looking. So I used some, some toned down colors. And it's easy to do by just mixing them up. That's the great thing about having three primary colors. So I colored them in. Um, the pots don't have a coordinating die, so I fussy cut those out. And I did use the dies to cut out the cactus. Now what I'm going to do next is take my craft knife here, and I'm going to cut slits in each one of those flower pots. And then I'm going to go ahead and slide my each of my cacti inside the flower pots. And I think this just, um, little details like this I think add a lot. <laughs> Okay, there we go. I'm going to add a foam tape to the back of them. Actually, just two of them. And then I'm going to set those aside. Now we're going to work on our background panel. I grabbed a piece of black cardstock from my stash, and I cut the top portion of it at a diagonal. Um, I'm going to place that on a piece of white cardstock. And then I'm going to take a stitched rectangle die from um, this die actually will measure a panel that is three and a half inches by four and three quarters. And I'm just going to run the entire thing through my Big Shot. Um, it's going to create stitching all around the edges, and I like that effect. And I think that looks really clean. <laughs> now I'm going to arrange three of my cactuses. This one here I'm not going to add um, foam tape to, so I just use my tape runner. I'm going to adhere that. And then I did add foam tape behind the other two, and I'm just going to pop those up in a little cluster. For my sentiment for this card, I chose Looking Sharp. I think that goes really good with the cactus, and then the really good, um, clean, sharp-looking um, card panel here that we made. <laughs> okay, now I wanted to add a little bit of detail. So in the stamp set, there's a little um, flourish. There's a couple of them. Um, I used the one that just has one end. And I'm going to stamp that a couple times right next to the sentiment. I'm going to go ahead and pop this panel up with foam tape and place that on an A2 size card base. A2 is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I did go around my little cacti with some weak Estella, and that actually finishes off card number one. Very clean and simple, but I like the outcome. Now moving along to card number two, we're going to do some more stamping. I wanted to take this little, it could be a pinata or it could be a little donkey, a colorful donkey. So um, I'm going to stamp that on a piece of white cardstock with my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Now I did go ahead and color in um, this little guy with 
it's the same colors basically that are in a tissue paper or the mulberry paper thank you for letting me know that guys I didn't know but I want the colors to kind of coordinate with those papers so I colored my little donkey in and now I'm going to take his dye and just cut him out and I think he looks so adorable I think he looks fun okay next I'm going to let's see add a little bit of detail with my white gel pen um, some of the little details on his little um, blanket wrap I guess you could say um, had little dots so I'm just filling in those dots with my white gel pen and it really made it stand out a bit okay lovely so cute now I have a panel here this panel is actually three and a half inches by four and three quarters so that's going to be our background now I wanted to create a fun pinata looking background so I cut out strips of the mulberry paper and then I folded them in half and then once they were in half I um, folded them in quarters and then taking my scissors I'm just going to cut some strips out in there creating like a fringe background I'm actually going to do that again to all um, all three of the colored uh, tissue here so we fold it in half fold it in half again and then I use my scissors to trim and I think that and I'm just kind of fluffing it up and ruffling it up um, actually Hero Arts does have a die that does this automatically and I'll leave link, links below to where you can check it out but it's pretty neat and then also if you have the multiple blade scissors it would work perfect for this effect too okay now we need to stamp our sentiment I, I wanted to chose a sentiment that would be fun so I chose Fiesta Time and I'm just going to stamp that with some VersaFine ink I'm going to stamp that on, towards the top part of my panel and so my donkey will go right next to it now I'm going to use my tape runner and add some tape to the bond portion of my panel and then I'm going to go ahead and add my little fringe elements and I was so excited how this really looked like a pinata <laughs> so it's a fun little card here then lastly I'll add my blue kind of fluffing it up a little bit now I'm gonna flip this over I was gonna just trim it down but I thought it would look more finished if I just tape those edges around the back side of my panel I'm gonna trim off this side it's a little bit too much there <laughs> okay now in the kit the stamp set actually came wrapped up with some real pretty green ribbon green and purple ribbon I chose to wrap a little bow around the top portion of my seam um, with the green ribbon and then I popped up my little donkey with some foam squares I'm going to add some foam tape behind this panel and then this is going to go directly on an A2 size top folding card base for bells and whistles I did add a few of these little gems that I had in my stash I had added some green ones and some blue ones kind of coordinated with my little fringe and that finishes off card number two okay for card number three I took some more of that mulberry paper and I I didn't know how it would do if I stamped on it but I'm gonna give it a go and it worked out really well so I'm taking three of the flowers in the stamp set and I want to stamp um, each of those flowers three times on each one of those um, different colored tissue papers there I grab two larger flowers and then I'm going to grab a smaller flower also we're having a really windy day I don't know if it, the winds gonna be if you guys gonna hear that or not but I apologize ahead of time for the wind okay I'm gonna stamp each of the flowers three times and then these flowers did come with coordinating dies so I'm gonna end up taking the coordinating dies and cutting all three of these out and they actually had ran through uh, my big shop beautifully no problems there so I thought these would make really pretty flowers very soft flowers just kinda of figuring out how to position my little die for each of my flowers that's a little bit tricky but once you get the hang of it it's easier now I'm going to arrange my flowers on a panel again this panel is um, three and a half inches by four and three quarters just kind of where I'd like them to go there 
Once I have them arranged, I'm going to take my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive and glue just the center portion of the flowers to my panel. I plan on kind of crinkling up those flowers. And of course, if you were to mail it, they would flatten back down. But um, I, I do like the crinkled look of these flowers. Okay. Now in the stamp set, there's also a little one of those flourishes. I'm going to take the double ended one and I'm going to add some flourishes around the left side of my panel here. And I'm just going to use some VersaFine ink. It was kind of buried. I had to, <laughs> I had to pull it out underneath my my papers. Okay. I'm just going to go around that entire left side, adding little black accents. And then in the stamp set also, there's a little um, solid um, flower. I want to stamp that around my, my little scene as well. And the nice thing about just gluing the center of the flowers is you can move, you can push them over to stamp kind of underneath them. <laughs> And I think that looks very lovely. Now we're going to stamp our sentiment. I chose to, the banner that was in the stamp set. I'm inking it up with some VersaFine ink on a piece of white cardstock. And then I took the sentiment that says uh, many thanks. And it has a swerve to it that will fit inside that banner perfectly. And I didn't stamp it too well, so I'm going to stamp it one more time. <laughs> And this is the cardstock that I'm using is actually a heavy weight. It's the one I use for my card bases. It's the Cougar Digital. So it's pretty thick stuff. But I added some clear embossing powder to that and I melted it. And I wanted to color in my little banner. So to do that, I'm going to use the inks that came in the kit. I'm taking the Fiesta Red and the Fiesta Teal. Grabbing my water brush, I'm just going to mix those two together and kind of create a purple that coordinates with my purple pattern or purple mulberry oh, that's kind of a tricky one mulberry paper and I'm just gonna color in my little sentiment once I have my sentiment um, colored in um, I'm gonna take my white gel bin and clean it up just a little bit and then I'm going to end up taking the coordinating die for that banner and I will just cut that that banner out. Um, it looks a little dark now, but when it dries, it's going to dry a lot lighter. And I think um, it, it matched the, uh, the purple flowers just beautifully. Here's where I cleaned up my little messies. Love my white gel pen cleans up a lot of messes, probably more messes than it does coloring. <laughs> okay, here's where I took the coordinating die. I'm going to cut out my little banner and then I'm going to go ahead and pop up my panel with some foam tape and then I'm also going to pop up my little banner with some foam squares. Now I was getting ready to adhere my panel to a white card base but I thought it would look really pretty with the black background so I'm going to matte I'm going to cut out a piece of black cardstock to create a black mat for behind this panel. And I think it just with the black accents on it, I think it made it stand out a lot nicer. So I'm just going to trim it down a bit. And then using my tape runner, this black panel is going to go directly on my card base. And then I'll add my panel here and then my sentiment. For bells and whistles for this card I decided to go in with some Nouveau Crystal Drops. This is White Blizzard. It's a real pretty iridescent and I added a few drops around my sentiment and all, and all the center of the flowers and I think it turned out really pretty. And that completes that card. Lovely. Now we're going to move along to our next card. Next card we're going to do some stamping again. I stamped the little Fiesta little mouse that's so pretty and then I'm going to stamp the little guy who has a little trumpet 
and then um, I'm also going to stamp the larger cactus that has the flowers on top. I misstamped this one, so I'm going to stamp it one more time. <laughs> and then I'm going to stamp one of the little flower, put the larger flower pot in the stamp set, and then the little single flower to go inside my little flower pot. Now again, I skipped the coloring, so just to save time, but I colored these images in with my Copic markers, and then I did use the coordinating dice to cut them out. Um, again, the flower pot didn't have a die, so I just fussy cut that out. But there's our little images. Some, I used bright, vivid colors for this. Now, the cardstock that I'm using is Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock, and I'm going to take some of the Fiesta Teal ink, and I'm going to create a background with that ink. I think this ink is so versatile, and so I wanted to show the many uses you could use with it. Now, I'm just using my blending tool to shade the background. And then I'm going to add some water droplets. And what's the nice thing about this ink is it's going to activate my um, my blending in the background, um, almost just like your distress inks do. So it's going to create a real pretty texture background. Now I'm going to cut out a panel using one of my rounded corner um, rect or rectangle dies. These are from um, Hero Arts, they're infinity dies, and I've been using these a lot lately, but I really like them. <laughs> Once I have my panel cut out, I'm going to create a frame with a smaller rounded corner die. And then I'm taking my card base. We're going to adhere the center part directly to the card base. And then I did add foam tape behind the frame portion. Now I want to arrange my little scene so I can stamp my sentiment. And um, here I place my little pot to the right, but I ended up finishing off by putting it to the left. But I think that looks great. For the sentiment for this card, I chose um, Feel the Music. I think that goes perfect. He's serenading the little gal there. And I'm just going to stamp it on that background panel with some VersaFine ink. Once I have my sentiment stamped, I will add my frame. And again, I did pop that up with some foam tape. And then I'm going to arrange all my elements back where I had them originally. And I did pop them up. The only one I didn't pop up was the larger cactus. For bells and whistles, I decided to go in with some more of the Nouveau Crystal Draw or Glitter Drops <laughs> with the White Blizzard. This adds a little nice sparkle to all my little elements. And that will finish off card number four. <laughs> so cute. Here's a close up. Now my for my final card today, I wanted to use some more of the flowers. So I'm going to grab um, five flowers and place them on my acrylic block. And then I have a piece of watercolor cardstock right next to my block. Um, I believe this one is the Canson XL. I wasn't too worried about the color of this background. I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool and then I'm going to use some VersaMark ink and I'm going to stamp these flowers um, on my background panel here. I'm going to cover the entire panel with those flowers. Now once I have that done I will go over my flowers with some clear embossing powder and then I'm going to go ahead and melt that. After I melted it, I did realize I did overlap two of the flowers in the center, so I'm going to try and fix that. Okay, now we're going to do, I want to see if these inks would do um, ink, um, I want to try some ink smushing. Now I've said this before that I'm not very good at ink smushing, but I'm going to give it a go because I really like the effect. So I took all three colors, and I'm using my spray bottle and adding some water to it. And I'm just going to place that on my panel. Now I had to be real careful because when you mix actually all three of those colors together, it will create a brown, a muddy brown color. So I was trying to be really careful. I'm going to just dab off the excess here. And I think that turned out pretty well, but um, I wanted a little bit more green. So I'm going to clean up my... Um, 
and actually the texture of my towel that I used um, was visible actually on my panel but I thought oh well it'll add a little bit of interest but here I wanted to make a green so I'm adding some of the Fiesta Teal and the Fiesta Yellow I'm just gonna take my paintbrush and mix it together to create a real pretty green I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow so I'm gonna dab another little bit of yellow and mix it all together and then I'm going to add some green I wanted um, it to be predominantly green. I'm going to daub off the excess and I think that's going to look really fun. Now I'm going to take a stitched rectangle die and cut out a panel and again I my panel is going to be three and a half inches by four and three quarters and I'm just going to use my stitched rectangle die here. And the flower mess up that I double overlapped I'm going to try and put in the center that way I can cover it up. <laughs> okay. And it, uh, you probably can hear the train too. Oh my goodness. But, you know, we don't even live really close to a train track. But yet, you can hear it pretty well. Usually it, it hurts the dog's ear. So after you hear the train, and you'll hear the dog howling. So he's in the garage. So hopefully you can't hear it. Okay, now I'm stamping this cactus here three times with my VersaFine ink. I'm going to go ahead and add some Nouveau um, Crystal Clear Embossing Powder, and I melted that. And then I'm going to color in my little cactus. So I grab the Fiesta Teal and the Fiesta Yellow again. And then I'm going to use my uh, water brush and mix those two together. And I'm going to, I wanted these cactus to be real bright, like my background. So I'm just coloring all three in using those two inks. And I encourage you, if you guys did get the kit, um, to play around with your ink colors because you can make some beautiful arranges of colors. So, I mean, I had really a lot of fun using the inks for these cards. But there's my cactus. I'm going to take the coordinating, or cacti, <laughs> take the coordinating dies and I'll, I'll Cut those out. Okay, there they are. Now we need a sentiment. So I chose, I want to use the birthday. So I'm going to stamp the birthday actually on some black cardstock for my stash. And then I did add um, some white embossing powder and I melted it. So that's going to be part one of my sentiment. And then I decided to go in with the smaller sentiment that says, it's your birthday. I'm going to stamp that with VersaFine ink just on a piece of white cardstock and then I, just using my scissors I'm going to block it off now we're ready to put our card together so I'm going to adhere the birthday trying to for the most part covering up my mess up there with the double lapped overlapping flowers so I'm going to add a piece of foam tape and then I'll add my birthday sentiment there I'm going to trim off the excess. Once I have that done, I'm going to use my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. It's a real nice glue. I'm going to add my It's Your Birthday to the center of my embossed birthday. And then I'm going to arrange three of my cactuses. Well, two of them I did pop up with foam tape, and then the middle one I just laid or glued directly on my panel. But I'm going to pop my panel up with some foam tape and place that directly on my card base. I do this a lot only because I like the dimension that it adds. So you could probably always skip the step about adding foam tape behind there. But I really like the way it looks. But I added a few of the black flourishes and that was it for that card. Now here's a quick look at all five cards that I made today. Now I did finish up part two already. I just have to do the editing process and the voiceover. So um, hopefully by tomorrow, you'll I'll have that up for you guys. I think this kit is a wonderful, versatile kit. I'll leave links below to where you can check it out if you're interested. But um, I want to thank you so much for joining me. I hope this gives you some ideas on how to play with this wonderful kit. I wish you a fantastic day, guys. And we will see you again real soon. Bye-bye.